concrete blocks. They're everywhere around us, holding up buildings, forming the walls of schools, stores, and factories. Over 10 billion of these humble gray blocks are manufactured worldwide each year. That's more than one block for every single person on Earth. But have you ever wondered how these essential building materials go from raw ingredients to finished products ready for construction? What's the process that turns simple materials into the literal building blocks of our society? Let's face it, concrete blocks might seem boring at first glance. They're gray, rectangular, and not exactly the most glamorous construction material. But behind these seemingly simple products lies a fascinating history precise engineering, and a manufacturing process that combines ancient traditions with modern technology. Here's how billions of concrete blocks are made each year to build our world. The story of concrete blocks begins with the Romans around 200 BC. They were pioneers in using concrete mortar for construction, but the first small precast blocks appeared during Emperor Caligula's reign between 37 and 41 AD. However, modern concrete technology as we know it today didn't truly begin until 1824, when a British bricklayer named Joseph Aston developed Portland cement, the binding agent that revolutionized construction. The concrete block as we recognize it today wasn't invented until much later. In 1890, Harmon S. Palmer designed the first hollow concrete block, receiving a patent for his innovation in 1900. Palmer's invention sparked a construction revolution. By 1905, just five years after his patent, approximately 1,500 companies in the United States were manufacturing concrete blocks. What started as a novel building material quickly became a construction staple. The early days of block manufacturing were labor-intensive. Blocks were hand-cast in individual molds, with each worker producing only about 10 blocks per hour. Compare that to today's automated manufacturing facilities that can produce up to 2,000 blocks every single hour. This dramatic increase in production efficiency explains how manufacturers can meet the massive global demand for these essential building materials. Now, let's look at what exactly goes into these blocks. Despite being commonly called cinder blocks, most modern blocks are actually concrete masonry units or CMUs. True concrete blocks are made from a precisely calculated mixture of Portland cement, water, sand, and gravel. This creates a light gray block with high compression strength, perfect for bearing structural loads. Actual cinder blocks, which are less common today, use granulated coal or volcanic cinders instead of sand and gravel. These blocks are typically darker in color and offer good sound deadening properties and higher thermal insulation but they're not as strong as concrete blocks. For applications where weight is a concern, manufacturers produce lightweight blocks using expanded clay, shale, or slate. These are ideal for non-load bearing walls where reducing structural weight is important. The manufacturing process begins with the careful preparation of raw materials. At modern facilities like Knitter House Masonry Products, there's a strong emphasis on quality control from the very beginning. Sand, gravel, and cement are stored separately in large silos or bins. Many manufacturers today prioritize local procurement of aggregates and cement to reduce transportation costs and environmental impact. For environmentally focused projects, many manufacturers now incorporate recycled materials into their mixes. This sustainable approach reduces waste while maintaining block performance. Regardless of the exact materials used, Moisture control is crucial during storage to ensure consistent quality in the finished product. The first real step in block manufacturing is mixing. Precise amounts of each material are measured according to carefully developed formulas. The proportions vary depending on the type of block being produced and its intended application. Portland cement typically makes up to 10 to 15% of the mixture, while aggregates like sand and gravel constitute the bulk of the material. These measured ingredients are then combined with a precisely controlled amount of water in large industrial mixers. Depending on the desired properties, manufacturers might add various admixtures to alter curing time, increase strength, or improve workability. For colored blocks, pigments are added during this mixing stage. The goal is to create a consistent mixture with the right moisture content, not too wet and not too dry. Once thoroughly mixed, the concrete is transported to the molding station. This is where the amorphous mixture begins to take its familiar rectangular shape. 
Modern block machines consist of molds that can produce multiple blocks simultaneously. The molds are filled with a concrete mixture, and then the magic happens. The filled molds undergo both compression and vibration, two critical processes that ensure the blocks' strength and quality. The concrete is compressed under tremendous pressure, forcing the particles together to create density. Simultaneously, powerful vibration eliminates air pockets and ensures the concrete fills every corner of the mold. This combination of pressure and vibration is essential for creating blocks with consistent strength and dimensional accuracy. After molding, the green or freshly formed blocks are extremely fragile. They contain their full moisture content and haven't developed their ultimate strength. These blocks are carefully moved to the next phase of production, curing. Curing is perhaps the most critical stage in concrete block manufacturing. It's the process where blocks develop their strength and durability through chemical reactions between cement and water. At Knitterhouse and other modern facilities, curing takes place in specialized kilns under carefully controlled conditions. There are two main methods for curing concrete blocks. Some manufacturers use low-pressure steam kilns, where blocks are exposed to steam at atmospheric pressure. Both methods accelerate the curing process, allowing manufacturers to produce blocks much faster than air curing alone would permit. The curing environment is precisely controlled, with specific temperature and humidity levels maintained throughout the process. Steam is introduced to maintain high humidity, which prevents the blocks from drying too quickly and developing cracks. The temperature is regulated to optimize the chemical reactions occurring within the concrete. Proper curing typically takes 12 to 24 hours, Though, the exact time varies based on the specific curing method and block type. After curing, the blocks have developed sufficient strength for handling. They're removed from the kiln and prepared for the final stages of production. For standard blocks, this might simply involve unstacking from curing racks and preparing for packaging. For specialty products like split-face blocks, which have a rough, stone-like texture, additional processing is required. Split-face blocks are actually manufactured as a single unit and then split apart after curing to create the desired texture appearance. This splitting process uses specialized machinery that applies force precisely along predetermined lines. The result is a block with one or more faces that have a natural, stone-like appearance that's highly valued for its aesthetic qualities. Quality control is integrated throughout the manufacturing process. Continuous monitoring and electronic systems verify that products meet specifications. Blocks are regularly tested for compressive strength, absorption rates, and dimensional accuracy. Manufacturers, like Knitterhouse, pride themselves on maintaining strict quality standards that often exceed minimum industry requirements. Once blocks pass quality inspection, they're cubed, arranged and stacked on pallets for storage and transportation. Modern cubing machines automatically stack blocks in precise arrangements that maximize stability during transport while minimizing the space required. These palletized blocks are then either stored in inventory or loaded directly onto trucks for delivery to construction sites or building supply centers. The concrete block industry has evolved dramatically over the past century. What began with hand casting 10 blocks per hour has transformed into highly automated facilities producing thousands of blocks hourly. This evolution in manufacturing efficiency explains how the industry can produce billions of blocks annually to meet global construction demands. Today's concrete blocks come in a wide variety of sizes, shapes, and specifications. While the standard US size is nominally 8x8x16 inches, well, actually 7 and 5 eighths by 7 and 5 eighths by 15 and 5 eighths inches to allow for mortar joints, manufacturers offer numerous variations. These include half blocks, corner blocks, and specialized shapes for specific architectural or structural applications. Beyond shape variations, modern blocks offer diverse functional characteristics. There are water-resistant blocks for foundation walls, insulated blocks with foam inserts for energy efficiency, and acoustically designed blocks for sound control. The industry continues to innovate, developing new block variants to meet evolving construction needs. Architectural concrete blocks have also expanded design possibilities. These include blocks with various textures, finishes, colors, and decorative patterns. Split-faced blocks, flooded blocks, and ground-faced blocks provide architects with options beyond the traditional plain gray block.
Manufacturers like Knitterhouse offer extensive catalogs of architectural blocks, allowing designers to achieve both structural performance and aesthetic appeal. The environmental impact of concrete block production is also receiving increased attention. Many manufacturers are implementing more sustainable practices, such as incorporating recycled materials, optimizing energy use in production, and reducing water consumption. Some are developing carbon sequestering concrete mixes that actually absorb CO2 over their lifetime, potentially transforming blocks from carbon emitters to carbon sinks. Looking to the future, research continues into new block formulations and manufacturing techniques. Scientists and engineers are developing blocks with enhanced thermal properties, greater strength to weight ratios, and improved environmental profiles. Some researchers are even exploring self-healing concrete that can repair cracks automatically, potentially extending the lifespan of block structures. The humble concrete block may seem simple, but its impact on our built environment is immense. From homes and schools to commercial buildings and infrastructure, these manufactured blocks quite literally form the walls of our society. The next time you pass a concrete block building, you'll now understand the fascinating journey those blocks took. From raw materials to mixed ingredients, from molding and curing to the finished product ready for construction. From ancient Roman precursors to today's high-tech manufacturing facilities, concrete blocks represent one of humanity's most successful building technologies. The production of over 10 billion blocks annually is a testament to their enduring importance in construction worldwide. As we continue to build and expand our communities, these essential building components will remain fundamental to how we construct our world, one block at a time. If you enjoyed this behind the scenes look, consider liking and subscribing for more similar content. See you in the next one.